Hi, welcome to Jane Malik Yoga. Today I'm going to share with you a winter yin yoga practice for the element of water. We'll be working with the kidney and the bladder meridians. So it's a half hour practice. So I invite you to go and get your bolster if you have one or uh, folded blankets and cushions for your supports as well as blocks or books. Um, if you're at home and don't have blocks, you can always use books. It's always good with our yin yoga to have um, some additional props to support our body so we can really surrender into the yin, particularly in this season of winter, which is very much a yin season. So if you get your equipment and uh, make your space nice and private and warm, I'll see you in a moment. So welcome back. So yes, on the seasonal yin yoga practices that I share here on my YouTube station um, for you to practice at home, we travel through the annual calendar with the five uh, seasons in TCM, in Chinese medicine and meridian theory, where we explore the five elements and um, the meridians that are associated with this. So there is uh, some very wise uh, theory behind the practice that I'm going to be sharing with you. So winter time, um, for those of you who live in a climate where there is a winter, so in the southern hemisphere, it's in July, August, June, July, August, and in the northern hemisphere, December, January and February, and wherever you are in the world, just tune in to when is that dormant season of stillness and hibernation? If you're not sure, you can turn to the animal kingdom and the plant world, um, which are our very wise teachers. So the season of winter um, is a time for us to slow down. So this is where yin yoga is such a beautifully aligned practice. Um, it's a season when uh, certain emotions may arise. So common emotions may be fear and anxiety, stress. Um, so if those emotions are coming up, I think it's really important that we acknowledge them and bring them into our yoga. When I say bring them into our yoga, we're, we're, what we're doing is we're cultivating a, um, a consciousness and awareness to observe, to realize that we are more than our emotions, we're not just our emotional body, and that when we can uh, come into a position of awareness and consciousness, we can allow these feelings to surface, to express, to, uh, to acknowledge, and to maybe even acknowledge the history of where they come from because it may not be only associated with the present moment. We carry things from the past through our memories. So in my experience, when we do this, when we uh, bring consciousness to our emotions in our yoga, um, it gives space for these emotions to uh, come out into their fullness, for those stories or those memories to come into our consciousness. And then when we're practicing our sana, particularly yin, we can bring this mindfulness and this presence and by opening the energy channels, particularly today, we'll be working with the, um, with the kidney meridian. When we open those energy channels, this emotion can flow. So my invitation is always to allow emotion to flow through your yoga. If tears come, allow them to come. If joy or anger arise, we really let ourselves feel, it's like we move in towards those emotions. So I always like to, with this seasonal yin yoga, also hold um, uh, intention. So it may be that we like to bring some self-inquiry to our practice, to ask questions. Um, what are my fears? You know, to really just start to question 
Um, and then also to just reflect on what helps me surrender and trust, like opening to the divine uh, journey, the divine path that we are each on. So what, and so again, the yin yoga practice really cultivates this letting go and surrender. So I hope that little bit of background helps. There's a lot more um, to this. So if you're interested to learn more about seasonal yin yoga, um, we have in-person retreats here in central Victoria and uh, soon we will have online courses uploaded onto the uh, Tara Springs website where people will be able to access courses to be able to deepen their knowledge with the Meridian Theory, self-care, as well as yin yoga. So we're going to begin by coming onto our bellies. So making our way to come to a forward facing Shavasana. You can create a little pillow with your hands for your forehead. In that way, keeping your neck straight. Or if you wish, you can turn your head to the side. Maybe changing side to side just to give each side of the neck a gentle stretch. So as we come to this earth bound, earth facing position, just taking a few deep breaths into the belly. <sighs> Using your sigh as a way to release any tension. Taking your breath deeper down to the belly. So as the belly expands, you feel the lower back expanding and rising. Exhale, the lower back descends towards the earth. So these nice deep yogic breaths, when we lie on the earth, we're actually using the ground beneath us as a measure of gentle resistance. So as we breathe, we get to expand the belly, the chest, the rib cage. As we exhale, we begin to surrender. Our yin yoga practice is a process of surrendering. So as we start, we bring that intention in. But we notice what areas of the body are feeling tense feeling numb or disconnected. And particularly noticing any areas that feel very tired. Winter can be a time that calls us for deep rest to restore and regenerate. Beautiful. And then coming up, we're going to come to a saddle position. This is quite a tricky position for some people, so I'm going to give a few variations. So it is where we have our knees bent, feet to the sides of our hips. Now some of us, we may want to come to this position upright and feel this. If it feels too strong to do both sided, we can have one leg straight and just sit with one knee bent. If it's comfortable for you, you can start to take your torso and upper body back. Again, maybe just coming back a little bit. For some, if that feels enough, we always in our yin yoga come to a stretch that is tolerable. We can feel the engagement in target areas, in this case, the front of the thighs maybe through the lower back, the more we come back. Maybe starting to open through the front of the body. So for those who are used to these postures, 
and can come all the way back. So always taking your practice really slowly. If you're new to yin yoga, don't feel you have to rush. The most important thing is to meet your edge with love and compassion. If you come all the way back, you can use a pillow or a block just to raise the head a little. It can be quite intense when we go all the way back. So you can use it as a journey that we start more upright and gradually start to recline. So once you come to your position, just noticing where in the body is receiving a stretch, bringing your natural breath to these parts. Steady breath using your exhale if you need to help release. And so we bring our mindfulness, noticing whatever's arising in the physical body. Noticing what's arising in the mental and the emotional body. And with each breath, just sinking deeper into your practice. Winter is a time of stillness. So just notice as your body comes to stillness how that feels. We live in such a busy yang society that winter time and rest and stillness is not often valued or prioritized. So notice how it feels when you do come to stillness. Is there a yearning for this? Or do we feel distracted and want to move out of the stillness? So being present with whatever's arising. I know that when I first was introduced to yin yoga 10 years ago, my body and my mind and emotion wanted to get out of there, didn't want to stay in the stillness. But after one practice, I felt this profound benefit. For those of you who know my personal journey, I suffered from quite an extreme adrenal stress breakdown. So the adrenals being uh, the little uh, endocrine glands attached to the kidneys. So many of us particularly who work in corporate careers um, and just in life in general, we're often overtaxing our adrenals. So this practice we're doing today is very beneficial. So slowly, slowly rising your upper body up and unbending those legs. So if you do one leg at a time, you just alternate. So it might be one minute for each side. So coming back to your Shavasana, you always take these little five second or five deep breath breaks between our postures, just to notice the impact that that posture had on the physical body. Noticing the breath. Breathing into any parts of the body where you feel constriction. And on each exhale, just allowing yourself to soften, to just be with whatever's arising. Beautiful. Slowly making your way up to come to sitting. We're going to do this beautiful posture. This is a beautiful posture for the kidneys and the bladder meridian. We're going to leave our left leg out straight, our right knee bent, the foot in at the inner groin. We start nice and tall. Maybe just lifting both sit bones off the floor, placing them level and tilting forward a little through the hips. So I often see in my workshops and classes 
People have a tendency to slouch here through that lower back. So in yin yoga, what we wanna do is just gently lengthen, which we do in the more yang traditions as well, but really bring that mindfulness to grounding through the base, tall spine, and then tilting forward. It's like a hinge forward through the hips. Coming to just a little forward fold. So we just start to notice how this feels through the hips, through the lower back, using our hands on the floor, in front, just as a gentle break, a gentle support. And our knee, our leg is straight. However, if that feels quite intense, you can bend your leg a little. You might even wanna place a rolled towel or blanket under the knee. Or if it's comfortable for you, a straight knee. And we start now to just relax the muscles of the body, so particularly of the thigh, the spine, the shoulders and the head. And as we do, breathing, connecting to the deeper tissues of the body, the web of connective tissue, and just start to let the body fold forward in its own time. You'll notice when there's a softening and a natural surrendering forward. Again, if you're quite new to yin yoga or are quite stiff and don't have a high flexibility, that's perfectly fine. We're all welcome to yoga. What we want to do is just come to what our edge is and stay here with our breath, softening, relaxing, being curious with the sensations, noticing what's arising and with each breath, letting go. If you let the head fold forward a little, it can be this gentle surrender to gravity. So if you are hyperflexible, hypermobile, you also want to be cautious with your yin yoga. Our aim is not to always completely surrender and melt. So if you are hypermobile, you might want to bring some structure to your body, imagining the structure, the alignment, the bones, and then allowing your body to surrender, but not collapsing. There can be, I find, a culture in yoga that people view flexibility as really good and therefore hypermobile people will surrender very quickly into the depth of the posture. But it's far more effective to maintain your structure, feeling into where the body's opening. Ah, beautiful. Slowly coming up, releasing that leg, the bent knee, coming back to lie down. Ah, five deep breaths. Just imagining into the depth of this winter, the short days, the long nights, into the darkness. Winter time can be a time of the void, the emptiness. Can be a time of dreaming. I always love to work with garden analogies where we're tendering, tending to the compost, to the soil, building up the fertility of the soil, nourishing, resting, composting, decomposing all in preparation for the spring when the time comes, the natural seasons ebb and flow. And when we align our yoga with this and our living, our lifestyle, 
the effects can be so profound for such simple practice. So slowly coming back up to sitting and we're going to change sides this time with our right leg out straight, left foot on the inner groin. And again, just starting in the sitting position, noticing both sit bones are nice and level and grounded. So it may be this is the posture. So simply sitting in an upright position, relaxing the legs, the jaw, the hips, softening the muscles so we let go of any doing and instead starting to relax into just being, being with the body being with whatever is arising in the physical body. And when you're ready, you can come forward just with a little forward tilt, the head coming forward, just noticing what is your edge. It may be different both sides. And once you come to a comfortable edge where you can feel maybe a stretch through the back of the leg, maybe an engagement through the hips. This is also a beautiful stretch on either side of the spine. So just notice where the body's being engaged, where are you being called to bring your consciousness to the body. With each breath, allowing yourself to soften and surrender. Beautiful. Natural breath. If the body wants to surrender further forward, go with that flow. If you're more upright, feeling into the depth of the engagement, it can be quite challenging. I know there can be a bit of a misperception with yin yoga. It can be a bit confused with restorative. That can be very comfortable and nourishing and um, gentle. Yin yoga, in contrast, can be quite challenging. It's very nourishing, but also the challenge can be on that edge and also on that edge of dropping into stillness. I notice sometimes in yin workshops, there can be a fidgetiness that people are wanting to move. Sometimes it's important to move, that it's not stillness we need. But it's to be curious, if we're feeling that restlessness, to notice that and see if we can drop deep into what's behind that restlessness. And see if we can be really still and present whatever's arising. Ah, beautiful, slowly coming up to recline in your Shavasana. So it's usually three to five minutes we have for each posture. But again, you can adjust that when you're at home some postures you may even want to be in longer, particularly the Shavasana. And other postures, if they're new to you, always starting with shorter practices, 30 seconds up to a minute. You can have little breaks between. And always remember that general yin yoga rule. If we want to come to a comfortable edge, if ever there's a hot burning sensation that you feel does not change over time, then you're too deep, just come back a little to come to what's a comfortable edge for the body to then be able to surrender into. If we're too deep, we're either going to do injury or the body is going to stay tense in its protection of the tissues. So what we're wanting is to find that lovely balance. Beautiful. So we're going to do a little bit of an advanced posture because I know some of you are 
already practicing with yin yoga. For those of you who are new, please just watch and maybe garner, gar gar you know, to see whether you would like to do this or build up to it in time. So the posture is known as the plow in traditional yoga. So we do it and also we do add a little variation called the snail in yin yoga. What we're going to do is come over into the plow, just check that I'm in the camera. We take our feet over to the floor behind the head. We might want to just come up onto the shoulders a little. Beautiful, clasping the hands together. We can have the feet on the floor, toes pushing down and having a nice straight leg. So in the Ashtanga, I know we focus on lifting the sit bones and having a straight spine. In yin yoga, what we're really after here is this straight leg. So getting a nice stretch through the backs of the legs, the meridians and the energy channels here. Beautiful. So breathing here. I know a variation for some women can be putting the feet on a bolster or even up on a wall. So if you just look to what I'm doing, you can push the feet back onto a wall so it's less intense, particularly on the neck. So you could stay here for up to three minutes. And then what we do is we bring the knees either side of the ears down towards the floor curling through the spine. So we're really opening the channels here along the spine. I hope you can still hear me with the microphone. So taking some nice deep breaths in this beautiful snail position. Um, so these two postures are important to be careful or conscious of if you do have neck issues but it may be a posture you come to just for 30 seconds or a minute just to try and to build up your practice so as you come out of your snail we roll down through the spine legs out along the floor and coming to resting Ah, oh, just notice how the back body feels, the backs of the legs, the backs of the spine on either side. It's like a body massage. If any of you have had shiatsu, I find yin yoga. Whenever I do my yin yoga practice, the afterglow feels like I've had a shiatsu or acupuncture. And that's because we're working with the meridians in this conscious way bringing our consciousness to our body, to our energy body. Beautiful. And from here, we're going to come to our happy baby. So we raise the feet, knees on either side of the body, clasping the feet. We draw the knees towards the earth. Ah, oh, happy baby. So again, this, the invitation in yin yoga is to be still. But if to start with you want to be a little creative baby and just rock and move, sometimes this can be nice for our yin yoga rather than going straight into the stillness and the depth. What we can do is just explore the movement, explore the movement through the hips and the legs. Ah, as babies do when they first discover that their hands can clasp their feet. Really exploring that. Coming to stillness when you're ready. Noticing the hips. This is a beautiful hip opener. Also the coccyx, the tailbone. Feeling it grounding to the earth. Noticing the region of the lower back, the kidney region, the kidney organs. Feeling the warmth of the earth. Breathing. Ah. 
Ah, beautiful. And releasing when you're ready. Legs out along the mat. Coming to a star shape can be a nice way to really release. That's wide feet, wide arms. Taking five deep breaths. Ah. Notice whatever's arising. Maybe as the body has been stretched, you start to notice sensations, maybe areas where we've been holding tension. And see if we can just soften and let go. Beautiful. And to finish, you can come either to Shavasana or I'll come up to sitting, so if you like to finish with sitting, either way. So this is just a half hour practice, which I find is enough for our regular practice at home. But if ever you want to deepen it, these postures you could stay in a little longer, but also finish with a nice long Shavasana. So on this beautiful winter's day, it's very misty here in Taradale. We've got the fire burning at the hearth. So I really invite you, wherever you are, whenever you're tuning into this winter practice, to really honour this season. It's not a season that um, is embraced by many in our society, which our society tends to be much more a yang-driven and outcomes-focused doing society. Winter time is a time of rest. Just imagine the animals going into hibernation or the plants have died back. Think of a perennial plant has died back and it's laying dormant underground in the richness of the soil. And just feel into all that potential in the seeds and the plants and the animals for when the, when the weather starts to warm up, when the ground starts to warm up and the sun comes out and the days start to become longer. This is a natural energy for us to rise and to start moving forward in life. So winter time is a time for dreaming, for visioning. What are we calling in for the next year? And if we're not sure, we stay in that not knowing. And over time, we learn to love this season and this space. And when we do, when we honour it, we have more energy in the other seasons, in the spring and the summer. And we will be more on track with our intentions because we have rested and we've dreamed. So I hope you enjoyed that practice. Um, and look out, look on my website for in-person retreats if you're here in Australia. And look out for online courses um, on my website. And sign up for my newsletter, um, which I send out each season, sharing practices like this. So please join my community and subscribe here to my YouTube channel. So beautiful. Thanks so much. Have a lovely day.